there, Heritage. I want to welcome you to week two of our More Together journey. Whether you're tuning in from Kiwani, Bettendorf here at Rock Island, maybe online, or perhaps you're a regular part of our Vida Nueva family just checking things out. Wherever you connect into the Heritage Network, it is intentionally designed to be a space for us to encounter God and to experience the transforming power of Jesus. That's, that's essential for experiencing the full and abundant life that Jesus said he came for. And God has allowed us to step into those spaces, lead others into those spaces for more than 50 years. And, and last week we kicked off this conversation by looking at where we've been as a church and where we're going. And if you missed that part of the conversation, I strongly encourage you to carve out time this week to get online and see what you missed. It's a foundational introduction to this journey that we'll walk for the next few weeks and don't want you to miss any part of it. But one of the things we talked about in our initial conversation was just once again recognizing the, the size of the mission field that we exist in. See, more than half of the Quad Cities does not walk in relationship to Jesus. That's more than 200,000 people who don't walk with Jesus. That's significant. That means they don't have a life marked by grace and hope. That means they're not in right relationship with God because the only way to do that is through Jesus. It means that they're not experiencing the resurrection power of Jesus being brought to bear into the challenges of their life. And they're not living that full and abundant life that, that Jesus came for. That's significant. Our mission field is big, but our, our God is bigger. And we know that our work is not done, so we're continuing to create space for people to encounter and experience Him because we have a heart and desire to live into the more of God. We want to see people live into the more of God. See, Jesus said that He had came that we would have life and life to the full. It's captured in John 10, verse 10. I have come that they may have life and life to the full. And the reality is we as a church are seeking to live in the more of God. Because it doesn't matter where you're at in your journey with him, there is more. Whatever you know, whatever you have of him, whatever you've experienced with him, there is more. And he wants you to experience the full life that Jesus came for. The more that he has for you is immeasurable. It's far more than we can even imagine. In fact, there's a, a man by the name of Paul who, who was a missionary and church planter in the early church. And, and he quoted the Old Testament one time when, when he wrote something that's in 1 Corinthians 2. He said this, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Wherever you are in your journey with God, there is more. And I don't ever want you to settle for where you're at. The love of God is wide and high and long and deep. And wherever you find yourself in the journey of knowing God and understanding his love and experiencing the fullness of life, there's more. And I want you to live into that more and the fullness of it. But maybe you caught that in order to experience that, there's a requirement, there's a prerequisite, if you would. It's just right here for those who what? Love him. See, he, we love because he first loved us, but when we respond to his love with love, then, then we're in a position to live into the fullness of life that he has for us, the immeasurably more. Now, you may wonder, well, what does that actually look like? How do I know if I'm living in a loving relationship with him? What, what does love look like? Well, the good news is that this, the Bible is filled with instructions and examples and teaching about how to live a life that is marked by love, the one that is a loving relationship with God. It also has examples of what it looks like to live a life that isn't loving toward God, and it's encouragement away from that. But the Scripture's filled with it, and I encourage you to have a regular investment in the Scriptures to know what it looks like to walk in love, to walk in the relationship with God that comes through Jesus. But today what I want to do is look at one particular example or, or explanation for what love looks like and how we live into that full life because of the love of God. So if you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to 1 John chapter 3. The first, second, and third John are towards the back of the Bible, right before Revelation and Jude. And we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at something that a man by the name of John wrote. And John was somebody that Jesus trained and someone who Jesus was especially fond of. And what John gives us is some clarity into understanding what it looks like to live in that, that love that God has for us as we respond with love to him. So if you've got a Bible, you can track there, or you can follow along here on the screen or in your note guide. But we're, we're leaning into 1 John chapter 3, and we're starting with verse 16. 
Here's what it says. This is how we know what love is, which is really helpful because we need to know what love is in order to live into the fullness of life God has. So this is helpful. He says, John says, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Verse 17, if, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Fair question. Verse 18, dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. We drop down to verse 23, and this is his command. This is, this is God's command. Two things, believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and second, love one another as he commanded us. So there's, there's two very clear things that begin to give us left and right limits for what we know what it looks like to, to be a people who love him, who respond to his love. And regardless of who you are, whether you've walked with God for 20 years or you're just 20 minutes into this thing checking out the things of God just being here, these, th these two things are the heart of the matter. They're foundational. To believe in the Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as his, he has instructed us. See, one of the fundamental realities for a relationship with God and to experience the fullness of him is to understand that we demonstrate our love for him and faithfulness to him. That love for God is demonstrated in faithfulness to God. See, we, we, we can't say we love God, but then live in a way that's totally opposite of that. Say one thing and do another. No, if, we're gonna, if we say we love God, we're going to demonstrate it in how we live in faithfulness to him. Love for him is reflected in faithfulness to him. In fact, John, in what he's writing here in 1 John in chapter 3, verse 10, he actually says that those who do not do what is right are not children of God. <laughs> and he says, nor are anybody who doesn't love their brother and sister. So these are, this is pretty significant bracketing of what it looks like to be a people who live in the love of God, loving him and loving others. And if we, if we love him, we will demonstrate that in faithfulness to him. But, but let's read a bit further understanding what does that actually look like in how we function on a daily basis. So we're going to drop down into chapter 4, and this is starting with verse 7 in 1 John. Here's what John says. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Now, one of the things if you spend any time in scripture or the Bible or leaning into understanding who God is, love is foundational. He himself is love. He does nothing apart from love. But it's required to, for us to express love back to him and to other people for us to experience the fullness of his love. And if you want to kind of drill down into what, like, what are the specific things that, be sh that should be showing up in my life that, that reflect that I am loving towards God and towards other people, I want to encourage you on your own time to go to 1 Corinthians 13. You can write it down somewhere, just 1 Corinthians 13. That's the passage that you may be familiar with because it's used in a lot of weddings. Where it's like, love is patient, love is kind. You may know that passage, but it gives very specific practical things that should be showing up in our life if we're actually living as a loving person, loving God and loving others. And, and if you're bold enough, if you're bold enough when you read it, to do a self-assessment by replacing the word love with your own name every time it shows up. So like if I did that, it would be like Sean is patient, Sean is kind, and continue to walk through that passage that way. It can be pretty convicting to read what love is and to see with a lens of whether or not we're truly living that way. But again, if we live in a posture of loving more, of living out of his love, there is more for us, immeasurably more. But let's read back with what John's saying. This is verse 9 of what John's laying out here. This is, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Verse 10, this is love. Here we go. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So Jesus is an expression of love. Verse 11, dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to also, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. It's where we experience the more of God. Verse 13, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. My friends, this is the more of God. 
This is the platform and the foundation for living in the more of God. And we as a church family illustrate what John is saying in a very clear picture that kind of breaks down everything that we have been reading and what he's writing out in this space. And if you're someone who has walked with Heritage for a while, what I'm about to walk through is something you've seen before, and it's a good review. But if you're new, and, and many of you have been leaning in in this last season, this will be helpful. Because one, it'll, make, it'll just give a better picture on why we're unique as a church, but also maybe give some clarity on what's missing in your own relationship with God and experiencing the fullness he has for you. See, fundamentally, no matter who we are, we know that we are created by God and for God. He's the one. He created us for him. For, and he wants relationship with us. The problem is, because he is holy and we have sin in our life and world, that there is a gap between us and him. Sin separates us from God. Yet he loved us enough, as John just declared, to send Jesus as an atoning sacrifice. So the death of Jesus on a cross, but the resurrection of Jesus from the grave gives Jesus the platform to be the bridge between us and God. Many of you have seen this before. You understand this, and you may be even living into it. Because the moment we actually believe in our heart and profess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we're saved. We're rescued from the brokenness of our life and sin, and, and we have relationship with God. In fact, we get to have relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's wonderful, but that's not the end of it. See, the Holy Spirit gives us power out of the, out of the Trinity of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us power to, to live into relationship with God. The power of the Holy Spirit, like, boom, sets us on fire to live in the fullness of life. This direction with a holy God, but it's not just to be saved. We're actually positioned to be sent. Holy Spirit empowers us to also be sent into a world with other people, people who need to know the love of God, people who are living in brokenness, people who are living in complex situations. We're positioned to lead them towards relationship with God. The problem is there's another gap. We call it the second gap. It's a gap between us and other people. It could be a, a socioeconomic gap, could be a, a language gap, a race gap, a gender gap. There are all kinds of gaps between us and other people that keep it, make it kind of hard for people to step into the fullness of relationship with God. But we intentionally, the church, seek to build bridges over those gaps. We invest in hard spaces, difficult spaces, so that the gap here is not an obstacle for people stepping across this gap on their own through Jesus. This, this is the whole gospel. And, and, and in Matthew 25, Jesus describes this dynamic in talking about sheep and goats. He talks about those who are hungry, those who are thirsty, those who are naked, in prison, sick, stranger or foreigner. We as a church seek to build bridges over the second gap so people can intentionally choose to step over the first gap on their own. But then as a saved people to live sent. This is the whole gospel. This is why we do what we do as a church family. This is the uniqueness of who heritage is and how heritage has been positioned in this world. For, for people to experience the love of God through the people of God. As we live in the love, the fullness of his love. And we do this in lots of different ways. In fact, one of the ways that we build bridges is through the Esperanza Center, the legal assistance center there. Uh, Caroline and her team of volunteers have been faithfully building bridges over gaps so that people can experience the love of God through the people of God. In fact, we've been doing this for three years out of that space. I just want to give you some statistics. In the last three years, we have helped 443 individuals from 52 different countries. 52 different countries. We've had 153 successful cases all the way through. We've watched 38 people step into citizenship with 21 more in process coming behind that. Each of those statistics represent people like Tamir. Tamir is somebody who served as a translator for our United States military overseas. And after his service was given the opportunity to come to the States and move in a process towards citizenship, but due to some health issues with his son and some travel, he ended up in a, in a knotted up situation where his status was, was in jeopardy. But through the help of Caroline and the team there, we were able to walk a journey with Tamir and he has stepped fully into citizenship and he's celebrating that here with her in his picture. Listen, I want you to understand, building bridges over the gaps is an expression of love. We are a people who are positioned to do that. We love, we welcome, but we do it under authority. We do it under the authority of God first, but then we also submit to the authority of the, the structures that we live under within our nation. But we help people live into fullness. And Esperanza Center is one of the places that most clearly demonstrates bridging the second gap. 
Because here's what we do. We see the value in others. Everybody has inherent value as image bearers of God. We all bear the image of God. We call out that image. We, we, we help address the challenges that, that obscure that image. We call them out to that full image that they're created for. And that is love. And we're not a people, we're not positioned in this world to be a people who accommodate culture. We're a people who are called to engage culture. And we do that when we build bridges. We do that when we step into hard, difficult spaces with the love of God, where, we're, where Jesus was skin on in those spaces, and it matters. It's where people experience the love of God through the people of God. And we get to experience the fullness of God as we risk into those spaces for more. Look, I, I know we're in a season of like elections and all that stuff, and, and I, whatever political view you hold, all right, the reality is that how we engage the stranger, the foreigner, is a biblical issue according to Jesus. And it reflects our love for him, or, or not, and how we engage. And we as a church are committed to demonstrating the love of God across the second gap. And, and the reality is that this is clear, I think this is compelling, but I want you to understand how God views this dynamic as he as a holy God looks upon a people with brokenness and gaps. Out of Ezekiel chapter 22, God acknowledges oppression in verse 29. He acknowledges poverty and he acknowledges the needs of the foreigner. And then he says this in verse 30. He says, I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it, but I found no one. I don't ever want us to be a church that isn't willing to stand in the gap. But we will be a church who's willing to stand in the gap, believing in the Son, Jesus Christ, and living out the command to love one another as we have been instructed. You know, we do that in lots of ways. And one of the things I understand as I, as I lean in, just once again reflecting on the reality of this whole gospel dynamic. You know, I heard somebody say this week that you know, when you think about political parties, you think about Republican and Democrat, you think about the elephant and the donkey, okay? I heard somebody say this. They said, we don't serve the elephant or the donkey. We serve the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let me say that again. We don't, we don't serve the donkey or the elephant. We serve the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, let me just, just hear me. It's okay to affiliate with political parties. I, I hope you engage in your civic duty. I hope you lean in out of your conviction. You engage. It's okay to affiliate. It's okay to work alongside. We do not serve the elephant or the donkey. We serve the line of the tribe of Judah, and that's Jesus. And he says, love one another. He says, be my witnesses. In fact, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the very ends of the earth. We're supposed to point to Jesus. We're supposed to direct. We're supposed to reach and risk. We're supposed to build bridges. I'll tell you, we're supposed to be the proof of his love because we're to be known by his love. Je Jesus himself said in John chapter 13, it's captured. He said this, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is his command. And I want to encourage you and us as a church to continue to hold a posture where we seek to be the proof of his love. Not just people who try to prove points. Seek to be the proof of his love in this world. Seek to be the extension of his hands and his feet. The, the more together conversation for us is an invitation to, to greater, more intentional partnership around being the proof of his love in this world across our region. And he's giving us greater platform to do it. But we as a church have to be willing to set aside our own comfort and to set aside our own interests for his interests and to love people in all their complexity wherever we encounter them. In fact, I want to take a moment to show you a video. It's a video of an experiment that a group of people conducted in a park in Los Angeles. And I think it starts to reflect the power of building bridges, the, the power of loving people wherever we encounter them. So just sit back for a moment and check this out. Here comes the runner. 
Could I run with you? Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Hey, could I run with you? Yeah. Can I just join your jog? Sure. I'm just about done, but I'll go with you to the end. Okay. I'm Asia. Morgan. Nice to meet you, Morgan. 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 30 seconds. They're coming towards you, station one. First sign's going up. Now. people felt loved? I don't know what's going on, but I love it. The one guy said, yeah, you bet you they did. You know they felt loved. Man, there's so many people in the world that just want to quit. They, there's so many people who don't understand that they're made for more. They don't understand that, that together with others, together in the love of God, that more can be accomplished, that they can experience more. There is more. There is immeasurably more. And I think that video so much for me illustrates and captures the power of just loving people we encounter them, cheerleading for them, encouraging them, coming alongside, pointing them to the fullness of life. This is what, that to me is what the church should be doing all the time, leaning into spaces where people just want to quit. But the reality is that they can go further. They can be more. There is more. There is more that can be in their life if somebody would just come alongside, build a bridge over the gaps around them, and call them into fullness of life. I love the dynamic created in that environment because there is more. Too many people are made for more than they realize. But we're positioned to help them see it and know it, and experience the fullness of love in God. Here's what John goes on to say. This is chapter 4, verse 16, latter part of it. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. In this world, we are like Jesus. We run alongside people who are ready to quit. We cheerlead for them. We point them towards destination, towards victory. We call out value. We show them what can be in this life, what full life in Christ looks like and what full life in Christ can be. In this world, we are like Jesus. John goes on to talk about there's no fear in love and perfect love dries out fear. But we drop down to verse 19. He says, we, we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. 
whoever does not love, who doesn't demonstrate that love in action, who doesn't champion for others, who doesn't fight for others, who doesn't do that under the authority and purpose of God is false. It's not true. That he goes on to say, if whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Verse 21, and he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. You know, I love the imagery of that video, of that run in the park. It, it, it to me, captures and reflects who the church should be. It reflects John's call, Jesus' call on our lives, where we should seek to be his proof, the proof of the love of God, the proof of his love in this life. But I'll tell you, bridging gaps is not always easy. It's complicated. It can be messy. It doesn't always even go where we hope it would go. Sometimes we may fail to connect or break through. We may even bump into unhealthy reaction and response from people just out of their own pain in the journey. But it is always worth it to seek to build the bridge. It is always worth it to run alongside and to champion and call out value in people. And we may fail in the moment in the sense of not getting breakthrough or not seeing the outcome we wanted, but listen, if we're gonna fail, let's fail trying, not fail watching. Let's be a people who are willing to try, willing to risk in the name and the love of Jesus so that people can experience the fullness of life available in him. If we're gonna fail, let's fail trying, not fail watching. And so I wanna invite each of us to consider a question this week. Where is Jesus inviting you to love more? Where is he inviting you to love more, to run alongside somebody, to somebody that's about ready to quit? Where is he inviting you to lean into a space where there seems to be no hope, where there is a gap, where there's brokenness, where you can be somebody who will stand in the gap so that people can experience the fullness of God, to build a bridge, to run alongside, to be the proof of his love for that individual who's about ready to quit so they can experience full life in him. Where is he inviting you to love more? There's more for you and there's more for that person you're thinking of, the people around you, if you're willing to step into those spaces. You know, as a church, we're creating a context in lots of different ways for people to encounter the love of God. We're trying to connect in the name of Jesus. And the More Together journey has lots of ways that we're leaning into that. We're doing that with strangers at the Esperanza Center as we run alongside them and we cheer for them and encourage them and champion for them. But we're also doing it in greater expressions. And a couple of the ways that God's calling us to do that in this next season is to have greater, broader influence in a digital platform. In our world, there's an increasing opportunity to reach further through technology, and we as a church are stepping into a, a greater footprint in this next season, a greater presence of communicating the love of Jesus in the digital world. What's well, one way God is calling us to reach further? One of the other places he's calling us to step a bit more and loving more is in our care with those coming out of incarceration. God has graciously allowed us to connect to the Rock Island County Jail and the Kwani Life Skills Reentry Center. But we know in this next season that there's a space to love more by, by creating space in transitional housing. A space to, as people exit back into public life, that they're not alone, they're not isolated, but they have people running alongside, championing them and calling them into the fullness God has created them. And we're leaning into that in next season in our more together journey. He, he's giving us a greater footprint. He's giving us greater influence and eternal ripple. And there is more. But getting to more requires more. People to pray, more people to sacrifice, more people to risk. But I'm inviting you to take time to understand where is he inviting you to love more? In fact, I just wanna take 20 seconds to let you ask that question of him even now. Wherever you are across our network, we're gonna take 20 seconds of silence for you to just ask him, where is he inviting you to more? To run alongside, to build a bridge, to champion? Who is that? Where is that? Because love for God is demonstrated in the faithfulness to God. So I wanna invite you, you can sit in right where you are, take some notes, you can lean forward in your seat. I don't really care, but whatever you wanna do for the next 20 seconds, let's talk to a holy loving God about where he's inviting each of us to love more. So 20 seconds of silence across our network, just ask him, ask him.
if in those few seconds God has given you clarity, I, I celebrate it. And I encourage you to boldly step into it. If you haven't yet heard, I encourage you to continue to create space and let him tell you where he's inviting you to love more because there is more. Continue in that conversation. As a church, we're committed to creating space for people to encounter Jesus, to encounter his transforming power and presence. He's allowing us to do that across our network in lots of ways across this region. Some of those spaces are occurring in places like the Esperanza Center or in places of incarceration. But it's also happening even as we gather as church families on weekends. And I want to give you an opportunity to hear from one of our own. Uh, His name is Justin. He's a regular part of the Rock Island family here. But Justin is somebody who experienced the love of God through the people of God and really gives us a practical example of what it means to love more and the impact it can have. So I want you to just sit back and listen to Justin's story for a moment. Before I came to Heritage, there was about a 20 plus year period of a very dark period of my life. I started doing things of this world and uh, an addiction of in substances and of all things. And, and, and the more and more I got involved with these things, the farther I felt from God and the farther I felt from God, the angrier I got and the more I just could jump back into these things. And so that cycle kept me going literally for 20 some years and it was the darkest 20 years of my life. All that led to the point where I was finally beaten down and broken enough. Finally, in my darkest hour, I just I cried out and I, and I begged him for forgiveness for all the things I'd done. And uh, I can honestly say right then is when my life changed. I had a friend that was in uh, recovery and uh, he had told me about this church and said he attended here. And I said, you know, it's, it's been a long time. It had been 20 some years since I really voluntarily went to church. and. Uh, and I came here, and I came here, and I literally, when the songs were playing, I burst into tears. And it was honestly, it wasn't tears of sadness, but it was tears of absolute gratitude. Tears of that feeling of being back close. And it wasn't like he went anywhere, but I'd, I had ran so far away that it was uh, that feeling of coming back home. Almost that's why that, that story of the prodigal son has such a spot in my heart, because it's that uh, when I came back, he hadn't gone anywhere. He was sitting there with arms wide open. It was a great feeling, and I've been here ever since. I'm very, very thankful to Heritage for the way they welcomed me with open arms and the way that when I came here, I felt completely comfortable and accepted as one. I mean, after many years of living uh, in a dark place, you know, the last thing I, I needed was to feel more isolated, and it was the exact opposite of what I felt when I came here. I think came here instantly. I was greeted with open arms and I felt accepted. I love all these people here for that. Working on the host team and love being able to reach out and greet with people. And I love seeing people, the new people coming to the doors for them to feel that warm welcome that I was certainly privileged to feel. It's just amazing. I mean, it's, we we always talk about the the broken and the sick and and leaving the 99 to chase the one. And I think there's a lot of people out there that still feel broken and isolated. And here's just a perfect space for them to feel part of and and get wrapped back into God's grace. It's uh, literally, it's it's in my heart. It's what moves my life forward is trying to reach out and be part of this thing, obviously here in the church and taking this church outside to other people so they can feel that kind of gratitude in their heart also. When I see those little glimpses uh, of God working in people's lives, and it just makes me instantly get tears of gratitude. And I know I've seen it. I've had the privilege to see it work in my life. And I've seen it in a lot of my friends that have come here and have had their struggles. And whatever struggles through life those may be, I've seen God working through them to try to give them some healing and some, and some peace. And it's, it's beautiful to watch. And I know I can never see the, the big picture and I never will be able to. And I'm fine with that. I move forward on faith. But when I see those little, little glimpses, tiny little glimpses of God working, man, it just... It's amazing, and it washes over me, and I see it here in this church, and that's why it's an absolute privilege to be a part of. I absolutely love that God allows me to partner alongside a church that's willing to build bridges so individuals like Justin can come back to God. We're willing to meet people right where they are, go into the hard spaces, the dark spaces, so they can, they can know him. 
And if God is willing to be gracious enough to allow us to see 1,600 people step into relationship with Jesus for the first time in just a handful of years, it doesn't even count folks like Justin making recommitments in the journey. How much more is he willing to do if we'll double down on our commitment to build bridges and to love more? So you may be someone like Justin who doesn't need to see the big picture and you're okay with that. I get all that as a senior leader. It's essential for me to have a sense of that big picture. And alongside our church board and alongside our, our leadership team and the ministry team as a whole, we have done the due diligence of seeking the face of God and we know the more that God has for us. We know where he's calling us. Not every church gets to create space for people to encounter Jesus like we do. God has given us a unique platform and favor in the journey. We've stewarded it to this point. We're going to continue to steward it moving forward. And as we lean into the next season, we're more together. You're part of that process. We need each other to get to that more. The more he's calling us to, we're incrementally declaring it in this conversation. In fact, last week, we handed out a document that looked like this. And if you didn't get one, I encourage you to do it on the way out today. It has information about the more that God has for us and some of the more that it'll take to get there. I encourage you to prayerfully review this. You can even get online. I want to give you a website address that will give you some information. MoreTogetherQC.com. Write it down. MoreTogetherQC.com. You go there even now. It has information and details, some question and answers. It has stories of life change that God's working in our church family. I encourage you to get on there and check it out. Because in, in the weeks ahead, we're going to continue to roll out how God is calling us to be a lead catalyst in and seeing more people come into relationship with him. The mission field is big, but our God is big. We're not done. Spiritually lost people matter to God. And he has uniquely positioned heritage to see the research that reveals a people not walking with him, to see that shift as we build bridges, as we function as the hands and feet of Jesus, Jesus with skin on if you would, in a world that desperately needs to know the love of God, to live into the fullness that Jesus came for. You're part of that process. My invitation for you today is that you commit to talking to God and doing what he says. That's it. Over the next few weeks, we're gonna talk more specifically about the how and details of the more he has for us. But my ask of you is that you would talk to him and you would do exactly what he asks of you. You'd step boldly into the gap you would step boldly in obedience, that you would let your love for him be demonstrated in faithfulness to him and allow him to do immeasurably more, not only in you, but through you. So let's just take a moment. I want to pray, and we're going to step back into worship, but invite you this week to continue to pray, to talk to him, and in the end, just simply do whatever he says, because there is immeasurably more when we do. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you that through his death on a cross and the emptying of a tomb that we can have life and life to the full. I thank you that we can be saved, but I also thank you that you send us. And I pray that you would send us, with a, that we would have the ability to live fully into that sending, empowered by Holy Spirit, positioned to build bridges, positioned to love more. Lord, you... You're calling us to love more, to restore more, and imagine more as individuals, but also as a church. And I pray that wherever you're inviting us to love more, we would be willing to do it, willing to run alongside, willing to, to champion and cheer and help people get to the destination, the purpose you created them for. And may we all experience the fullness of walking with you. So in the days and weeks, months to come, may you speak and may we hear. May we be willing just to talk to you Listen to what you're saying and step boldly into doing it. So we do this for your glory. We do this. It's not about us. This is ultimately about you. But may we be a people who are willing to risk, willing to love more, so we can see more restored, that we can even live into the thing we can't even begin to imagine because you're at work moving in and through us. I love you. I pray these things in the name of your son, in the name of our Savior, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen.